So it's uh, lunchtime the next day and this tank has been sat with the oxalic acid in it. I've just poured it out. It doesn't look too awful. Um, but what is quite interesting is the inside of the tank now looks, I'm not going to say brand new. But close enough. All the rust is gone from in there. And um, I'm just going to take off the, uh, this is a piece of an old shelf leg with a piece of inner tube rubber behind it that's been blocking up this um, port where the fuel tap goes. I'm just going to pop that off and get the last bit of the acid out of the tank. Then um, probably get a hairdryer and just warm the whole thing up, drive the moisture out. Well, it's a lovely sunny day outside and it's lunchtime, so I thought I'd do a bit of... Um, the pleasure work. Excuse the noise, the garage door's open, but it's blowing a holy outside. This thing has been drying off all the waters out of it after rinsing it from the oxalic acid. And um, before I go any further, as I say, a bit of pleasure work. I just want to give it a light polish, see how good the paint is or isn't underneath. No real need to do this, but um, why not? I'm going to start with this ancient bottle of teacup metallic. There's some scratches around the front of the tank where someone's uh, jeans or Kevlar's or leathers have been. Um, just put some swirls in. I'm not a professional paint corrector, but I do love the smell of teacup. <laughs> Now it's shiny with rusty spots, rather than rusty with shiny spots. Let's see if I can find another one of these. And uh, a bit of this. Put some of the really good stuff on it. <laughs> Let's leave that to uh, dry to a light haze and I'll be back. And time to take off the polish. And so let's take this outside and look at what uh, 26 years of damage with polish on top of it looks like. Well, I can see the sky in it. That will do for now. So some fun new items arrived in the post today. We have got one battery, pre-filled with acid, ready to go. A pair of new rear shock absorbers, 50 quid's worth. They're probably rubbish, but they'll get us through an MOT. A set of fork seals, a set of fork boots, <clears throat> and what else is in there? Brake caliper rebuild seals, a pair of new front brake pads, and um, at the back there, a pair of Kenda K262 trail style retro revival tyres, because why not? I suppose we should probably get about sorting this bike out now. First things first, just going to check the batteries. So I've got negative and positive, negative and positive, which should be fine. Got to install the um, bolts and nuts that go in and allow us to screw stuff to the terminals. So that's not too difficult at all. It's just slot in like that. And one on the other side like so. And then we need these um, direction changing plates, I suppose, off of the old battery. We can just pop those onto the new one. Don't go mad, these are only soft metal, so over tightening them will probably break them. 
I'm reusing the studs, oh, sorry, nuts off of the old battery because they're slightly longer and um, with this style here, sometimes if the nut slips all the way back it's really hard to get this started, especially when you've got something thicker like this in the way. We're going to now go pop this on the uh, maintenance charger and just let it bring it up to its normal charge and then we'll give it a go on the bike. Alright, happy weekend everyone. Um, back with a bike Saturday morning. I was busy Friday night and um, apparently busy getting a cold so excuse my sniffles and horrible voice. What we're going to be doing now is taking a look at these shocks that um, came in the post. Now, <laughs> they're the wrong way round um, and there are a few different versions of this bike. Some were 310mm, some were 330mm shocks. Um, mine's got the 310 but it has a 10mm and a 12mm end and they're the wrong way up on this so we need to press these bushings out and switch them end to end which is a bit of a horrible process if you don't have a press which I don't um, I've done one just to check the process as you can see by the state of this piece of threaded bar but this is the next best way you want a socket big enough for the bush to slide into when it comes out we're just trying to get this rubber bit and the metal bit inside it out um, you want to before you do any of this I don't know if it actually helps but I always stick a bit of um, penetrant on of some sort or another once things start moving it will get where it needs to go pop that on there um, and you want to find the easiest way to get these out is to find something that will follow the inner bush this part off the other shock Something that will push that out, then the outer rubber bit will lose its um, lose its hold. You can push the whole thing out at once if you've got the means to, or using different size sockets, but it takes a lot more force and you're a lot more likely to damage the rubber. So, then go nut washer and the bush off the other shop. We are going to do a bit of damage to these, but it's not going to be um, critical. And then it's just a case of wind. And as this is going in, pop a bit of WD or something on it. And when you get about halfway in, you'll feel it starts to go nice and easy now. When you get about halfway in, stop. Um, what you've now got is the bush we just pushed in is halfway through. The other one should be halfway out the other side. Like so. And then... Usually, the one you've just pushed in, you should be able to get back out by hand because it's nice and greasy. And the one on the other side shouldn't fight you too much. If you can get a wiggle on it, there you go, and it's out. You can buy these bushes online if you totally trash them during the process. But now, if you've got strong enough thumbs or with a bit of help from a screwdriver, you should be able to get the rest of the bush out. You can see why they fight so much by the shape of them. I'll do that again on the top one just to show you. So big socket, grab a bush or suitable thing to follow it through, washer, nut, something to make it slide, learn which way to put your spanner on, push it through about halfway. pop it off. Strong hand or suitable prying tool just to get this the rest of the way out. This one we might need a bit of help from the screwdriver and you can see you just want to kind of wiggle it and it'll basically find its own way out due to the internal pressure of that bush. Okay. We don't strictly, on these, need to take out these rubber pieces. We could just push the other side bushing into it. But um, for the sake of demonstration, there you go. So, would you believe that noise that just went past a 1999 Fiesta and poster paint red with a side exit exhaust? So, 
Let's have a go again. These back in. This is the top nut for the suspension. It goes in just under the seat. We want to grab the uh, bush that fits it nice and snugly, like that. And that's going in the top, which is up here. So, as always, everything's easier with lube. Probably shouldn't do this. It <laughs> likely increases the uh, chance of spontaneous self-deconstruction. But we can pop that in there. And... Um, to quote the Haynes manual, refitting is just the reversal of removal. So what you can do is um, spin this around. In fact, spin it around like so. Now you know this is what wants to go in. You can, um, if you're so inclined and worried about pinching the rubber, you can likely start this. I'm just going to need to do this off the camera for a second. There we go. You can start this in, push the rubber home. You want to make sure it's fairly even from side to side. You don't want it poking out one side because that will increase the chance of it finding its own way out. And then stick the whole assembly on here, but this time you can forgo any kind of drift to get it in there. So just a nut and a washer you really want the washer here because it stops you marring up the edges of this bush and then it might even be possible just to yeah i can basically wind that in by hand there's going to come a point where it dramatically increases in tension but with the power of uh, driving it in this way you're not going to struggle Okay, and when you see, you probably can't hear, but when you see this washer go flush with the assembly, you know you can stop. And that should have. Ah, looks like some more ultrasonic cleaning fluid is here with the delivery man. Okay, two big boxes over there. Let's get back to this. So, there you go, that's now pressed in. That is gonna shimmy and wiggle about a bit as things come together, but it will straighten up. As for the lower end, we've got a bit of a conundrum on this bike, I think. And I'll just pop you off the stand. This uh, lower section here, is, I believe, the bush, because the shocks that came off of it, which are the factory items, don't have any kind of metal bush through the rubber. It's just um, essentially one of these. There we go. Straight over that peg. So we could take something like this and potentially drill it out, but I don't think there's enough meat in this to drill it out enough to go over. Um, and I don't think, from what I can see on eBay at least, you can get these with much larger hole than these. So it might be that we have to um, pop this back into the shock and then essentially use the washer that comes on the bike that holds the shock on here to sort of drift the whole thing into place on the bike. That looks like how it was uh, from the factory. I've got the workshop manual, so I'll have a look at it and see how big a mistake I'm making, but that should at least get us two shock absorbers ready to go. So. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other one 